so proud of yourselves. We're so proud of you. A flurry of champagne flutes and red envelopes. So much has happened between August 2015 and today. At the University of New England campus, resisting SIPs and the urge to open them until these medical students get the cue. Interestingly, I wanted to be an architect. Annie Lou remembers exactly when she realized she wanted to be a doctor. My mom had gotten sick and I was really inspired by the doctors who had treated her and taken care of her. Um, sadly, I lost her, but I realized that I wanted to do more. It's match day, and Lou is among the more than 120 students about to learn where their medical training will take them next, which hospital they've been assigned to for their residencies. I think I'm gonna feel a huge sense of relief to know. They found out on Monday that they had matched, they just don't know where. Jane Carrero is the Dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine. She says in Maine, there's a major shortage of primary care physicians. A significant portion of our doctors are over the age of 55 and 65, they're gonna be retiring soon. Most of those are in rural areas. She says there's another factor that adds to the difficulty of filling the shortage. In north of Portland, you only have family medicine residencies. You don't have pediatri pediatric residencies or internal medicine residencies or even general surgery residencies. So um, if a student doesn't get into the main med system, um, they really have to go out of state. But in this moment, Lou is learning where she and her new fiance will be moving. <laughs> goal is to eventually return to Maine. <laughs> so sweet. I loved that moment. So there's a new effort also to provide more residency opportunities. Senator Susan Collins has backed a bipartisan bill to authorize nearly $650 million over the course of five years to train medical residents in community-based settings including rural areas like we have here in mm. Maine. Mm. Yeah, that was great.